welcome to BISP Solutions. I am C. S. Anjana Mishra, working as the lead functional consultant at BISP Solutions. I specialize in synthesizing and analyzing the financial data. I have seven years of experience in NetSuite, HFM, FCCS, and so others. BISP Solutions is a tech company providing technological solutions across the globe. We have a far-flung proficiency in end-to-end -end implementation and support. Today, we'll be looking upon journal entries in the Oracle NetSuite application. A journal entry is a record of the business transactions into the books of account of the business. In general sense, a journal entry is just a record of all the transactions that is happening uh, in the business that is having any monetary terms attached to it. We are talking here about the posting transactions. In NetSuite, usually there are two types of transactions. That is one is posting transaction, the other are the non-posting transactions. So journal entries are passed for the posting transactions. That means any transaction that has, that has a monetary value attached to it. A journal entry is the first step of the accounting cycle. Journal entry details of the old the financial transactions of the business and make a note of the accounts that are affected. Journal entries are posted on the, based on the principles of double entry system. This means you can add as many lines of account into your transaction, but the total of the debit amount and the credit amount should be the same. That means in order to complete a journal entry, the debit side and the credit side of the transactions has to be equal. Uh, this is just a performer or an example of the journal entries that are usually uh, passed uh, into the business operations. Uh, like as you can see, uh, there is a loan that is to be paid, a loan that is to be paid then interest expenses, uh, interest expenses, loan payable, and everything has been paid. So this is just an example of how journal entries are passed. The main thing that needs to be focused on that the uh, debit amount and the credit amount of the transactions are actually equal. Uh, though there are many lines that are included into it, but the uh, transactions here, the debit side and the credit side have to be equal. That is the significance of the double entry system. Now let us just take the second example that is interest expenses, interest expenses to be paid. That is interest expenses have become accrued uh, due and they need to be paid. We'll take this example into the NetSuite application. So this is my NetSuite application. Now we'll be just passing the same interest expenses transaction into my uh, NetSuite application. Uh, I have already uh, passed this transaction into my journal entry. I've already created a journal entry for that. Uh, so we'll just view it. So this is the journal entry where uh, which I had uh, passed at the for this uh, particular interest expenses becoming due. This is my journal entry that is this is how I have passed the transaction. We'll see the GL impact of this transaction. So the GL impact says that interest expenses uh, have become due and now interest expenses have been transferred to the interest expenses payable. Now uh, the account number 5006 that is interest expenses of the BISP is an income statement account and 5007 is a balance sheet account. Interest expenses are an, is an expense account and uh, interest expenses payable is a other current liability account. So that is a balance sheet account. Now, since expenses have increased uh, and expenses are debited, so the um, uh, amount has been debited and interest expenses payable and uh, liability has been increased. Now we have an a liability in the name of interest expenses payable uh, standing in our balance sheet. So liability has increased. So that means uh, when a liability increases, it is credited. And so 3000 amount has been credited. I will show you how I have passed this uh, journal entry. So this is how I have passed my journal entry. I'm not going to save this entry. I'm just showing how I have done it. 
So the currency you can choose while posting the journal entry. GBP, I'm taking it because that GBP is the reporting currency. Exchange rate, if you have a different functional currency and a different reporting currency and you're pure choosing a different entered currency uh, or a functional currency, then you can choose the exchange rate uh, depending on the exchange rate to policy that is applicable into your organization. You can use the average rate, closing rate or the spot rate. Uh, date of the transaction, the posting period, you can post a transaction into the prior periods also if it is allowed into your uh, application by the business organization's policies. Uh, reversal date, you can include uh, a reversal date into it. Let us just include uh, the today's date only. And this date, I would just select 14th. Uh, river, what is a reversing journal entry and everything? We'll be having this under a uh, total different topic of what are reversal journal entries and how is this helpful into our organization. You can add a memo number to that. Uh, we, I'm just not using my reversal journal entry <clears throat> as of now. Yes, so now the account is interest expenses they have become due i have incurred the expenses and i am actually uh, creating a liability because i haven't paid it yet so this is and now i when i'll save it it will be posted into my books of uh, accounts so this is how i have actually posted my uh, journal entry now just uh, when we are talking about journal entries, this is a journal entry that is usually passed in a business account, a single business account. But when I am a multi subsidiary company, I can also pass intercompany journal entries into my system. Now, let us just continue with the same example where my interest expenses I have incurred. Uh, BISP have incurred uh, interest expenses, which shall be paid by uh, U.S. West, there is a di uh, different subsidiary, U.S. West, and that is going to pay for the uh, expenses of BISV. So this is the same example in a continued way uh, where an intercompany transaction has happened where one company's expenses have uh, agreed, the other, comp the other subsidiary has actually agreed to pay the expenses of the another subsidiary or the parent has actually agreed to provide for the expenses of the subsidiary and so on. So this is the journal entry that has been passed in the as an intercompany journal entry where the interest expenses of BISP are to be uh, have been agreed by US West to be paid by them. This is a different subsidiary. So this is also an intercompany journal entry. Now this uh, is actually an effect. It is almost nil uh, a nullifying effect or a nil effect because the interest expenses have been debited and credited. The only thing standing here is uh, intercompany receivable and intercompany payable. An intercompany receivable payable account has uh, stood up into the books of accounts. That means now there is an intercompany one comp inter uh, one subsidiary is going to receive something from the other subsidiary of the a group. So this is a group entry. Group entry means uh, when you are a multi subsidiary company or you have a pair uh, holding and subsidiary relationship with uh, one of your uh, with the companies, then if any transaction happens in between them, uh, that is a group entry you can call it as. So this is the uh, same interest expenses example. I have just taken it into a, a intercompany journal entry example. I can, I will also show you how I have just posted this. So here I will have to select the from and the to subsidiary, which subsidiary is paying and which subsidiary is receiving. Where is this transaction being originated from and where is it going to? So you can choose the currency, whether GBP, USD, uh, if you are using GBP, uh, USD, whichever currency you want to, uh, and here you will have to post the transaction. So I am taking the intercompany clearing account.
and uh, similarly for the expenses uh now the second part will be for my bisp trainings expenses have been incurred by bisp trainings and now there will be a intercompany payable also by the bisp training so this will be the entry this is this is the entry that i have actually passed this was the entry that we have passed so this is how you can actually uh, make journal entries that is uh, within the uh, company journal entry and also you can pass inter company journal entries also and you can also have inter company elimination entries that can be passed into the net suite application so this was all from uh, my side on the inter company journal entries uh, and the normal journal entries in case of any queries or help that is required or consultation that is required from our side please just do uh, get back to us at www.bispsolutions.com uh, where we would be happy to help you thank you so much